name is Terry Lee from Sweet Pea Papers and the Sweet Pea Papers Facebook group. This is video five in our Winter Fairies series using a kit by Victoria Designs of the same name. And this is a Sweet Pea Papers project for November of 2022 and not a design team project. You can get a full step-by-step -step tutorial in the form uh, written out in the form of a PDF if you're a member of the Sweet Pea Papers Facebook group for free. Okay, so we left off on page, we completed page 10 and I went ahead and switched them back um, because I wanted the one with the ribbon on the front. That'll not do. And um, I just um, switched the side the paper clip was on to fix it so that it would work. I don't know what I was thinking. Anyway, oh, I need to ink that. And um, we'll probably put some sort of a little decoration on that. Okay. Um, when I go back through. So page 11 was so easy that I decided not to do it on camera. I put a little bit of glossy accents here. I fussy cut out this little fairy. How many her cards that I put them in too early? Almost looks like. Uh-oh. I hate that when that happens. There we go. Okay, so um, I just uh, fussy cut out this little fairy using my scan and cut, of course. Uh, that's how I ended up with the little tiny ribbons and the little bitty bow. Um, and then I highlighted it with glossy accents so that it wouldn't warp by filling in the wings. You know what I mean? It tends to warp things when you put too much on um, or a lot on. There's never too much when it comes to glossy <laughs> That's my story and I'm sticking to it. So I highlighted here, I highlighted on here, and then I just glued it here and up here. And then apparently I put these two little tags in too early, but uh, that's all there is to this page. Now the next page, uh, the next two pages are the center of the signature. So we're going to do, um, I don't know, a little bit more. So we're going to be doing page 12 today. I'm not sure whether we'll get to 13. Um, so that's where we're at. Now, as you can see, I have a cutting mat and my sharp blade out. Don't ask me why I'm going in off on this adventure. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to make a waterfall with these two envelopes. And then we're going to put the uh, tabs on the pockets. We're going to cut them for pockets. Now, I already did this part ahead of time because we've done it two or three times in this series already. So I figured... You didn't need to watch me run this through the big shop, put the acetate on, ink around the window, uh, ink around the window, put the acetate on, um, and put the paper on first. Um, who's on first? The paper's on first. What's on second? Um, so we're going to do it that way. Um, the top envelope is going to have the window, so it's not going to be the one that has the charm attached to the tab. I decided not to do windows on both since this one's covered. Um, just open it up and it'll have a pocket or something on it, probably a belly band, so that we can have a full-size writing card. So now to measure to do this, we want them to come in the farthest from the right. and We want them to even come out. The, I'm sorry, let me start over. We want them to come out facing the left. So when we flip this over, we're going to line it up on the right because we have to do it backwards. 
Now, I did do this ahead of time just because it's kind of a, I don't know, fidgety thing. You just lay the envelope that you want to come out even with here on your paper and measure the width. Then you measure the height of the envelope and make a little mark. Then to make the lines straight, the easiest way I know of is to use a T-square, which is a ruler like this. And it's got a little notch on the bottom so that you can hook it on the edge. I'll show you on here. You can hook it on the edge and um, move it back and forth. And as long as your paper's lined up along the edge, it will automatically make a straight line. You'll have to excuse my throat. It's doing something weird. I ate an omelet and now all of a sudden my throat has decided to act goofy. No more dairy, huh? Okay. So you've got your mark for these two and you've got the height. So turn it this way. Put your T-square up against here. Put your card up against here and draw your straight line. And then flip the paper over and at the bottom of the envelope, draw another straight line and draw it from the edge to the edge. Then you want to draw a straight line from the top to the bottom. That's why you don't have to mark the bottom because you're going to use this ruler. And then that will give you the straight line without... Um, it is a straight line. It's, I use the edge of the glass and not the edge of this, which isn't straight. There we go. Um, and then you just slide it over and do the other vertical line. Okay, so that's all there is to that. It's just a little something that's kind of boring to watch on screen. Now to do this, we're going to cut from here to here on both of these. Oh, and this is a this is one half inch in between. So you want to go from the one that's going to be on the edge, you want to go in one more half an inch for the other one. You don't want to go in that way because then your envelope will stick out over the edge a half an inch, unless that's what you want. So now we have to use our straight edge and cut this right here. Now I'm going to try to do it on camera. Yes, sharps on camera, there could be blood. Um, use your uh, Timmy ruler and use the side with the metal on it. I don't know if you know that there's a side that's metal. It's the thicker side and the thinner side is plastic for drawing. So you're just going to lay it along here. I say just, this is a Fisker's paper trimmer and it's kind of um, ergonomically and kind of a little squishy a little bit. And I've never used it before because I try not to use sharps. So we'll see how this goes. So I'm going to go from here to here. on your cutting mat. See? Move your hand down. Okay. And then I find it easier to flip it over and do the other one. Make sure it's done all the way down. I have a little hitch, but not enough to make a difference. Okay, then we're going to do the same thing on the other one. Wow, look at that. You saw it here, folks. 
no blood on the paper. <laughs> so now um, this is going to go like this. And I did do it backwards. So our papers are going to be upside down. Hmm. See, I, I did it backwards again. That's all right. They're just flowers. The actual flower is going to be upside down. But we're going to pretend like we don't notice. Because I just can't do it again. I'm afraid that I'll cut myself. So I had it right and erased it just for a minor detail. So now we want to prepare the envelopes. Yeah. We want to prepare the envelopes. Let's double check and make sure it fits. How about we do that? And the hole is going to be a little bit longer than the first part of the envelope that you put in because they're tapered. So see that fits just right in there just like that. And when you fold it over it's just like that. And this is going to be the top envelope. So on this envelope we're going to put magnets. That will hold them both down. I have to order some of these from Amazon. They're a little bit more expensive than AliExpress. I think they're $12 on Amazon and they're 10, 9 or 10 on AliExpress, but I don't have time to wait. So, um, I wonder if I can go ahead and attach this envelope now. It's all ready. This one, you're going to want to paper it and then, um, or trim the edge for the pocket first before you uh, put it on the page. I was going to do just a neutral page, um, just in case. <laughs> okay, so then we'll flip this over. We'll glue this in. Oh, we can actually turn it over the right way because we can just use it as page 13 instead of 12. Ta-da! <laughs> oh, this is crazy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we want it to open this way. Nope, that won't work. It's going to have to be upside down. No, it isn't. Deep breath. Let's do what we're supposed to be doing. Okay, let's put this pocket or this envelope in. You just do it like you would any other envelope. Just want to make sure you've got it in all the way. And you you don't want to um, go over this. So Really, it could have gone three quarters over, 
So now we're going to have to cut this flap smaller. I'm going to cut it just on the other side of the tape because otherwise when we go to glue it, it'll go past the slice for the other one. So either way, cut the flap shorter or make these farther apart. Then you'll have to remeasure, you know, differently if you're going to make them farther apart. And that's why, folks, I added extra time for this one. I've only done this once before. So we're going to put glue on this. I'm going to put it back through the slot. Now you know what's going to happen is, A, I cut this crooked. B, the um, this is just the inside of the um, pocket. Um, what's going to happen is the slot's going to be too long now because this is narrower than the full pocket. No, it's not. Goofball. Okay. You can tell where it goes because if you've inked it, so you can see where the ink line is. We're just going to put a little bit of glue across here. Remember, it's going to be glued down to the page or the book. Now, you won't have to trim the other one. This was just my mistake. You know, like doing it upside down. Two minor details, but able to be rescued. No big deal. Okay, so this one is ready to go. Yes, this one's ready to go. Now, we need to do this one. Well, except for papering the back. Now this, there's our other magnet, we need to put the magnet on the back. You want it so it doesn't pucker up. You want it to fit, but you don't want it to pucker up. I'm going to cut this one for the side pocket. I'm going to ink the paper. We'll be cutting that one long side off, but and this paper it doesn't matter which way's right side up and which way's upside down. And that is why I chose it. And it's a good thing, too, because we were able to flip the page around to make the flowers right side up. Okay. So, actually, let's paper it first because I measured it before it was cut. So let's paper it first. Thank goodness we're done with that. 
So I got the lines correct. They're just on the wrong side of the page. And since it's the center spread, we were able to flip it over. But this appears that it is just a smidge big because you can see the Well, no, you can't. It was the other one I was seeing. All right, I'm just going to be quiet. <laughs> I'm giving you all sorts of misinformation. Because if I glue the other one on and then trim it, then it's going to remove that edge that I put on it. But that's okay. Because we'll do the other one the same way. If we're going to do the whole page wrong, then we're going to do it wrong together, both envelopes. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. I didn't think I was going to be able to line the envelopes up, uh, the windows up. So I could have put a square one in one and a round one in the other, so I didn't have to worry about that. But it's covered up. And so I figured, why not put a belly band or something on there instead of just a window? You can get more cards and things in that way. Okay, I'm going to cut the, um, the edge off for the pocket. And I need to re-ink both of these. Now, since the fronts are papered all the way to the edge, because we papered them and then trimmed them, um, then we should uh, paper the backs the same way just to make it look the same just to be um, consistent I knew it was a C word <laughs> I just couldn't remember which C word it was I know there were several like Kakamami that came to mind, but that was not the correct word. See for correct. Got to make them to make them correct. So now we're gonna put this one in. The one that I did before I did along with Miss Paint a lot, and that's the name of her Facebook group and her YouTube channel. She does excellent tutorials. And I actually got it on the first try, but I wasn't doing it on camera. That's why I normally don't do these on camera but I needed to show you guys how to do it, so. And you want to make sure it's not getting caught. Then we're going to take this tape off, or paper off, and we're going to glue it. You can just glue it right across the tape. Just like you do if you're doing a scrapbook or something and you use the tape and then glue over it. Some people do that on their book covers too. I'd like to try that sometime. Maybe I'll try my first one off camera. 
just for a book that I'm doing for myself or something, which I never get the chance to do. Okay, so now this is going to go this way. So this is going to be our top. And this is going to be um, signature two. Uh, video five page 13 not 12 and this is going to be facing right only on a right side facing page only okay so now this will hold this one shut so now the next thing that we have to do is Um, add the pockets to the envelopes, which I actually wrote that down in the wrong order. So when you need to make cards with tabs, which I do not have the paper set aside for, and I actually don't have the next pages um, what do you want to call it? Um, see what I've got that isn't white on the back. That won't work. Yeah, because the fairy's at the bottom. I wonder if this would work. Oh. Oh, look at that. Might work. Let's give it a whirl. If I could get that castle and part of that fairy to show through that window, I would be one happy person. So the end we want to save is going to go in first, and we trim the other part, which is the top. Trim it right there and then double check and then we'll cut the width after we get the card all the way in. We, it won't be this wide, so we won't have to worry about that fairy. What happened here? There we go. A little extra glue was sticking in there. Put this in. Oh boy, look at that. So we want it to be even because we're going to put a tab on it. Wow, even I'm happy with that outcome. And we still have these two we can use as pockets if we just cut the fairy's little head off on the top. This one is the one that'll have the charm, though. You know, this is far enough out. We could probably put a charm on each, on both. Oh, look at that. Look how that came out. And the crowd roars. 
Let's ink it. Now, since we're going to put a tab in each one, I think we should do one just above center and one just below center. Now, I think they're far enough out that we could put a charm here and a charm there, and it would be fine. That'll be fun. That'll be three charms so far in this um, signature. With this page, we'll be halfway through the um, signature. So I have to figure out something to do that gives us a charm or something on the other side. And then I'm not going to cut the card out for that one. I just wanted to show you how to line one up to show up in the window. So I don't think I did the other one off camera. So now let's put this tab. Let's not put it over the fairy, for goodness sake. Let's put it up a little bit. Because if we were to put it dead center, well, we would still be okay. But we don't want it to line right up with that one. Which actually, though, it would probably look crooked if it didn't, huh? And it sticks out far enough. Yeah, I guess we should line them up. Saying things out loud sometimes helps. So we'll put it in the center. Yeah, that'll be fine. Remember, they're all sparkly. My silver eyelets should be in today. So I should be able to go back and put um, charms on the tabs on the other signature. I'm going to run out of charms. Well, no, not really. I've got quite a few, but I had pulled out the ones that were sort of kind of fairy related. Not really. I don't have any fairies. Which you would think would be a prerequisite to doing a fairy journal. No. <laughs> No, no, I've decided no. Okay, so we'll put this here. And when we make the other card, we'll lay it down and line it up when we put the uh, tab on so that they're lined up. Okay, so there's only 30 minutes in and we've got this one done. So I'm going to put you on hold and I am going to try to figure out something for the other page. And then um, we'll try to get that done in the next half an hour. Okay? All right, I'll see you then. Just one second. So while we were gone there for a second, um, I got to thinking about how thick this is. Um, our first signature isn't very thick, and I'm not trying to make a big, thick book. I just want to make this pretty little book. So um, I don't want to bulk it all up. Now these manila folders back here, I went ahead and put the little butterfly on there and inked around there because I had forgotten. Uh, but I took one of the manila folders out because it made it so thick. Um, I may put it back in just because it looks kind of silly without it now that I look at it. You know what I should do? If I'm going to do that, I should put the one at either end. The reason I didn't is because this one is so much different. And I really like these two. You know what I mean? Well, this is just going to have to make it thick, I guess. We can't. 
can. No, because we've got that there. I'm going to say we could spread them out and overlap them just enough for the um, paper clip to hold them. So you could do that in your book. Just um, spread them out farther so they don't all, you know, jam up here in one spot. And I'm very tempted, very, very tempted to not use eyelets at all. These are so small and dainty little tabs. I'm thinking of just putting holes in them and adding the uh, bulb pins. So that's that. And back to this. So this is thick and I don't want to add, and that's thick, and I don't want to add more thick. So what I think we're going to do is we're just going to do a belly band. And um, I found in the ephemera this um, that was supposed to be like tickets, right? And they were on the page like this. I believe there was one more. And they were on the page, and they're supposed to be tickets. And you cut them apart. But what I did was I folded them in half. And then we're going to make a, and then I had the one left over. Um, we're going to make a very thin belly band. This is the writing card. It's a piece of ephemera, actually, that came with the kit. And it looks like it's going to gonna work. So let me move this for just one second. And we're going to have to Velcro dot them so they don't, because I couldn't get them to um, not be all springy. <laughs> Spring. Um, and then this is going to be our paper. Hmm. Yes, this is going to be our paper. Because then it says the Tales of Fairies. And I'm thinking, I forgot I had that alarm. I need to call my doctor's office. Um, I was thinking of using glossy accents on there, just on the F part for fairies. I'm not sure. We'll still, we'll have plenty of room because this is just um, ginormous. So let's get the height first. So we're basically just making a belly band and sticking some cards on it. Exciting, I know. But I think it will look nice and that's what counts. All right, now let's make sure we get the musical notes in case any of it shows. Okay. Now, we just want enough to hold these in the center. Oh, yes, yeah, see, I printed them on with decorative paper on the back. And the back sides are plain. That's why I don't feel bad about gluing them down. Um, make it about that wide. lost my mark. <laughs> a light blue piece of paper with a big pencil mark in the middle and I lose the mark. Okay, so we'll make it this thin. It looks like it's a smidge short. How did I manage that?
we will notice it because it's different than the other. So let's use the edge of this. Plus, it'll have the icicles at the top that way. Okay, that's too better. That's what I get for bragging about the... Um, trimmer. My other blades came in for my other one. I can't believe they just didn't work. I've never, ever, ever. But Fiskars has a 100% lifetime warranty. I mean, the blades are definitely going to get dull, but for them to show up that way. There we go. That looks better anyway. It's got the icicles. And we're not going to really see this. It'll just look like there's colors and patterns behind it. So let's... Do you want to glue them on here first? Yeah. Let's glue it on the page. Let's ink it. Or ink the invisible belly band. So I probably could have done this off camera <laughs> and just come back with uh, page 14, but we had 20 minutes to hang out, so I figure why not? Okay, now we want to make sure to glue our icicles on the top. Now we're going to take these. Yeah. And we're going to glue them on. We need to figure out the spacing. Maybe we should put this one in the center first. And then put one of these above and below. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Let's do that. Wow, it's a little hard to tell where those, <laughs> where the line is. When you're looking at all those fairies. Too high. I 
could possibly go wrong with something this simple? Okay, that looks fine. Does this look crooked to you guys? I think it does. Good old Fabri-Tac takes a little while to dry. Oh, that was silly. That was just downright silly. Something that should have taken two seconds. That got pulled. Did it again. The only thing I can think of is that the belly band is a little crooked. Apparently I need enough glue on there that I can smoosh it around. I don't know, that may not be too bad like that. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but that's my neighbor's dog going up and down the stairs. The thing is the size of a small horse. <laughs> I think the dog's name is Kimber. I think that's what they said. The last time they were taking the horse out for a trot. <laughs> it's a very nice dog. I love it. It's just big <laughs> for an apartment. It's a Weimariner. Yeah, see, we are off-center. I mean, you know, this one could have been moved down. I wonder if I can still get it off. Look at me go. I better get this this one off before it dries. You know what I could have done? I could have made my life easy and made little marks. So when you think you're cheating by just doing something like this, by just making little marks, now you can see why we should have made a little mark. We had them laid out and they were good. Okay, well, 
I just can't believe that it needs to be even lower. This is going to have so much glue on it, it's going to be the sturdiest belly band in the world. Okay, now we're going to go by this. Well, this seemed like such a simple idea. Okay. Now, I'm not sure. I don't know. You know me. I just hate things to stick out like that. Of course, I've yanked it every which way now. Oh, here I am. Like that folds. See, this one's staying down. Oh, because there was a little bit of glue. I say we do it. Oh, I ended up having to put Velcro dots on our flaps. Um, the magnet that we put in on that top envelope in our envelope waterfall um, just didn't hold through everything. It got too heavy. By the time the second envelope, when you went to turn the page, the second envelope was so heavy or heavy enough that it pulled it right away from the page. So... Um, I ended up putting two Velcro dots on, one holding the top envelope to the second envelope, one holding the bottom envelope to the paper. Okay, so I want the white up here. Okay. Good grief. And now, this better fit. Came with the kit that way. I wish it didn't have the tan. I could say that. That's why I haven't used a bunch of the ephemera that's come with it. It's got this cream color around it. And I am not a fan. Not, not, not a fan. Now there's a darker right there because I had to draw a pencil around it to get scan and cut to cut it out. But a lot of it has um, this cream color around it or in it. And we're doing the, you know, the white. Like, this one is cream. I know that seems so silly. Now, uh, this one I would use. Okay. So that's the torture for that page that should have been so simple. I should never have said that. Never. Never, never. So, that will go on this side. That looks all right. That will go on that side. This will go on this side. And that will be our center. Okay? All right. Well, that's it for this video. And I will see you in the next video. And that will be just a second for you and a day for me. Okay. Bye-bye.